Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today we are looking at something called Pico Cat. Now, this is a remarkably niche thing. It's more of a curiosity than something you would probably use on a daily basis, but truth is, I have gotten so many requests to cover this that, hey, I relented. Here it is on the channel, but in order to understand Pico Cat, you probably need to understand the Pico part of it. Now, what Pico is, is Pico 8. Pico 8 is a fantasy console. What that means is it's sort of a virtualized 8-bit hardware machine. It's designed for making programming from a programming day, a simpler days in the past. It's a constrained environment with a simple Lua programming language, and it makes kind of developing stuff easier, funner, more pure, more old school in the way that things go, but it's got the convenience of working on modern hardware, and it's kind of amazing what people can do with Pico 8. Now, if you want to check it out, it is available at Lexel, whatever, I'll link that down below. So that is Pico 8. Now, let's get into Pico CAD. What is Pico CAD? It is a lightweight CAD program, computer-aided design, for... Uh, Pico, virtual machines, basically. It is written in Pico 8, and you can use it to create 3D models. It is absolutely kind of obscene that this exists, but without further ado, let us go jump in and take a look at it. As you can probably tell by the website, this is available up on itch.io at this address. I will, of course, link that down below if you want to check it out as well. The other nice thing is, when you download it, you get a pretty comprehensive, uh, set of documentation kind of walks you through everything you need to know it is a simple and straightforward concept for the most part but um it, it's here it's well documented the, the keyboard shortcuts is probably the biggest thing you're going to want to know so there's the basic controls As you go down a little bit further you get kind of a more comprehensive set of commands there's there's another reference in here so this is uh pico 8 let's go jump in and take a look at it when you download it it's a simple zip file extract that out and then go inside and run the one for your platform of choice. The one we want here is Windows, and we'll go ahead and run Pico 8. Here you go. The Pico console is booting itself up, and welcome you all to Pico 8. Yes, this is retro. You do not have a lot of pixels to work with, but you can actually do a shocking amount with PicoCat. So this, to get things started, uh, basically you can do a right click and add various different things here. So we've got pyramid, prisms, cube. We'll start with a simple cube. So there you can see it. You've got your various different viewports here, and you've got a 3D rendering over here. You can choose between wireframe, solid color, or texture color. Yes, you can fully texture map in this guy. You can navigate around using the arrow keys. We're going to orbit if nothing's selected, or rotate, I believe. Uh, okay, I thought that there was a pan. Uh, I don't immediately know it. You'll notice as I mouse over things, you get these little drops there and grab that vertex by left clicking it and then we can move it around and you basically can start shaping things in 3d now and we can just grab various different vertexes kind of move them around and we can start making our 3d model once again you can switch between the various different types there and there is our object as we've created it. You can also come on over here and go into single view mode. You can use this for texturing. I will showcase that aspect now. So what I'm going to do instead is use one of their example files. From where you went ahead and extracted things, just open that folder up again right here, and you'll notice in the directory, there's also an examples folder. If you wanna load an example, you can literally just select it out. Uh, so for example, let's grab the uh, vehicles demo and just drop it on PicoCAD 8, that will load it up. And here you can see a bit more of an example. So here we got, by the way, you can zoom in and out using your scroll wheel. And then once again, if you've got nothing selected, the arrows will move. So here you can see a number of different vehicles uh, in fully textured mode. So you see this truck here, see how it's broken into two sets of polygons, we can switch between the different faces there. And then you'll notice down below, this is your texture map. So if I select this face right here, I'll click it right there. I can come down here and I can define the area that the texture is going to work with. Now I just screwed up the texture mapping, but let's say for example, I wanted this instead to be this green car. We could overlay it on the green car and you can see how simple texture mapping actually is. It's a strangely capable program that I don't foresee a whole lot of use for outside of if you're in the Pico infrastructure or ecosystem. However, what you create here, what you are working with here, by the way, I can go back, hit spacebar, or I can grab this guy right here and switch between. Uh, there are the simple models that are being uh, used and created here. So let's go back here to the wireframe view. So there is how things look. And again, it's just simple a matter of grab and drag uh, points around 
to model things in your 3D world. And you can also do so here, although if I can point selection is a little bit wobbly. So I don't know if you're only meant to edit in these particular viewports, but uh, yeah, that's kind of it. We've got a little bit more control when you've got a mesh selected. If you've got nothing selected uh, and you do a right click, that's how we got the primitives menu up. But if I have something selected, I can go ahead and right click. And then you're gonna see we have things like coloring the mesh, extruding faces, rotating the mesh, face properties, uh, clone a mesh, delete the mesh and delete the face. So that is essentially uh, Pico CAD, the menu is up here. So what you can see is view files. This will open up the folder that everything is outputted to, the, the app data directory that things are located in. Obviously, it'll change between platforms. And you can save as. Now, as you're going to notice from the examples I looked at earlier on, uh, let's see right here, uh, they're all .txt files. So you want to come in and take a look at it. They're pretty straightforward. It's basically uh, just raw primitive data encoded in. Uh, pretty straightforward, but what happens if you want to go ahead and uh, export those out and use them in, say, like Blender or something? You wanted to take something you worked on, such as, say, this submarine model, like so. And again, you just drag and drop it into the world, uh, and there is a submarine in here. There's also some weird geometry around the outside. Here, let me use a different example. So I'll go ahead. Uh, let's go back here. We'll grab a uh, toaster. All right, so we'll drop toaster into the world. All right, there you go. So let's say you've got this toaster model right here. Let's actually take a look at it. There, there is the primitive version of it. There is your toaster. So if you want to take that toaster model, a real low polygon model, and you want to export that out to the Blender ecosystem, for example, you want OBJ or you want to load this into Godot Game Engine, Unity, Unreal, whatever, uh, there is another file over here. So if you go to get PicoCAD, you go to the downloads, you'll notice there are a couple different options here. There's PicoCAD itself. That's what we've been looking at so far. The manual, which, by the way, is already included in here, so you don't have to download that separately. But there's also Toolbox. Now, Toolbox, let's go ahead and grab that there. It's, again, another file. You just basically download and extract it. Oh, so that's not Toolbox. That's the output folder. So here, Toolbox, Bin, Windows, and we run Toolbox. And this is kind of like a, just a separate Pico 8 application. And what you do here is you take the application that you want to export out. Uh, so, for example, Toaster. And then basically just drop it on top here. It will load that file up. And you'll notice here you have straightforward. You can export as OBJ with the material and ping file. Uh, PBL or PNG file. So I'm just going to hit the one key. We just exported that out as an OBJ file. And now you're going to notice at the bottom it says uh, view files. Which by the way, if I was going to pick a letter to use from a very retro font, I don't think I would have gone with Z. Because it looks a whole lot like everything else. So anyways, uh, we hit the Z key or Z for you that like to say it wrong. And there you see, there is the directory that loaded from. So we're gonna just take that folder right there. We go file over to Blender, which by the way, here is that submarine model with all the stuff cleaned up around it. But what I'm going to do is just do a file, import, OBJ. And then I've actually already gone to that directory, but what you do is just pop that directory up there. There is our toaster. Let's load it up. Oops. Uh, let's move that on the, okay. Where's my toaster? Let's select the toaster, GX. Oh, I'm in an edit mode. GX. There we go. So there is our toaster. Let's see if it gets the materials properly. Let's go into EV mode. Uh, okay, it looks like the submarine worked out flawlessly, but for some reason, our toaster, uh, not so much. But as you can see, you can easily export out your uh, OBJ files. Just in order to do so, you are going to have to use that separate toolbox feature. And that, in a nutshell, is Pico 8 and Pico Toolbox. Let's go back over to Pico. Pico, sorry, Pico CAD for Pico 8. Uh, it's a very constrained environment, but it, it's, it's definitely a hobby for some people. And there was just so much interest in this thing for some reason that, yeah, I guess I figured I would cover it. And that's what I did. So that is a complete CAD program written in a retro 8-bit console. By the way, if, again, if you're interested in checking out Pico 8, I, I do recommend doing so, to be honest. It is just a great deal of fun. Uh, there's a lot of resources out there. Pico 8 is probably the most popular of the virtual consoles out there. And there's a ton of people out there that have uh, done some really interesting projects with Pico 8 and shared them with other people. Uh, so if you do want to check this stuff out, uh, I would recommend Pico 8 to check it out. It's interesting for sure. And it's kind of amazing that people are doing things such as making complete CAD programs uh, in a Pico 8 virtual machine. And this thing has even texture mapping, etc. Is there any real world use for this stuff? No, not really. But is it interesting? 
Yeah, at least to a lot of you, it seems like it. So let me know what you think of Pico 8, Pico Cad in general, and this whole retro hardware thing or virtualized hardware thing of fantasy consoles overall. All right, that's it. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.